Good morning, neighbors. It's been a while. I've been contemplating my navel, as I want to do. I've been thinking about what's going on in the world. How can we make a difference? What could we do? This channel is about pollution. I touch on many aspects of pollution specifically nuclear because it's not being dealt with it's being ignored it's being set aside the main conversation the decades now of nuclear waste stored across our nation as competent as we are some people don't understand evolution and change over time and yet it keeps happening so how do you put all this together this pollution thing this is pollution of our conversations insertions of a three-letter word that have nothing to do with the conversations about our medical sciences, about our chemical sciences. Science is knowledge. There's no degree in science. There's no master's. There's no doctorate making you a doctor of science. It's too much. So if you know that and are humble, you don't get rich. The challenge is how to understand, how to level set, how to understand what normal is today and look for those changes. So how do we do that? I speak about isotopes. Isotopes are related to elements. They're daughters, they're twins, they're sisters, they're cousins, they're whatever you need to, to view them as, but they exist in ratios out there in the real world. Man has invented more of these isotopes, created them in a, some abundance that's harmful to everything on this planet now, because that's the way it works. So the waste is going undealt with. It's profit centers. It's about making massive amounts of money for a few people because they're special. So it's broke. It's broken big time. What do we do? How do we fight this? Well, water. Our body is 70% water. Somewhere around that. Everything on this planet depends upon water. Back in the early 80s, Exxon Production Research doing studies for the USGS, mapping U.S. aquifers and the flow of water in those aquifers, deep earth flows. Back then they knew we were pumping these aquifers out. Now we're puncturing these aquifers with our minds and polluting them as well. We've already done that. There's maps and history and evidence of that. Some call it science. This is uh, geology, geological engineers. This is drilling engineers. This is chemical engineers. This was the wealth of knowledge of the Exxon Corporation and all their affiliates drilling holes across America and they were getting samples of the water, the liquids from those samples. They're also getting rock samples, building geological records and maps put out there on our supercomputers and our storage arrays and our storage farms that we have been funding since before the internet was invented. These massive storage subsystems you need pointers into. You can't remember everything in them, but you need to know where they are to go find them again because all you've got is reference pointers to masses of information built upon the bodies of many people before us. So this is Exxon, they built a massive USGS database inside of that. Studies was an aquifer in the west coast that was leaching contaminants from the nuclear practices in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, still into an aquifer that was unknown before the studies done by Exxon Production Research. 
for the USGS, 1980s. This is, we, we've been there. So where is this going? What is this saying? We used, pardon me, Exxon Production Research used an inductively coupled argon plasma spectrometer in order to analyze the water samples. It was one of the most channel-loaded spectrometers I've seen, which means it's worth hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in a facility that was worth more than that. This thing, this spectrometer, this couple of spectrometers fed a Cray supercomputer to help build imaging, 3D imaging and structures to map the nation's aquifers using tracer materials. Put something in one well and see how long it takes to get to the next well. I would argue that study is still going on. That research is still going on from 1980s. Imagine what we could visualize a cross-section of America's aquifers. Someone can do that already. Education, public education, sharing of information and knowledge, more so than some other things. So what can we do? Maybe we find labs that do that level of testing and submit samples to those labs using our sciences. Samples of water from across the country, much like samples from the Pacific Ocean were taking, looking for radiation from Fukushima. That was valuable reference research, known and added into an archive of data that somewhere is probably visualized because we're visual animals. We like that stuff. So, basic thought here. The sampling, the testing, the lab to do that, the multiple labs to do that, the record keeping required for that. This would be a large undertaking, exposing, linking into other reference information sets that we do have. This would be asking people out in the countryside to grab a well sample. This would be asking people in the city to grab a sample and send it somewhere. The term for this is elemental assays, isotopic assays, looking for the fundamental elements within whatever type of sample they are to the minimum detectable limits of the instrument, not governmental bound limits, not regulatory bound limits. Basically you turn the instrument loose, which means some high precision, which means technicians, which means a lab, which means equipments, which means multiple labs for verification and cross-check and reference. A process set up to do that. But without being able to see the results, what have we got? What are we doing? Where are we going? So that's my idea. Find some labs ready to take samples. and figure out how to fund all this. We got a few, maybe over a dozen recent subscribers. So there's some 900 videos back there. Little pieces, each one's a little touch of some fascinating thing that we've done, been, do, enjoy, don't enjoy. So take what you can, pieces out.